So I'm going to create a new sequence now. File, new sequence. And what I need to be aware of when I'm creating a new sequence is whatever footage I have imported or that I'm trying to import or work with, that is the settings that I should be trying to match in my sequence. So if we look at the options for Coolboard, we've got it's a video clip 960 by 540. It's one pixel or square pixel resolution, 13 seconds long, 24 frames per second. Okay. If I look at the current sequence settings, it's widescreen and it's 25 frames per second. So immediately it's it's wrong. The size is 720 by 576. Again, not matching our video clip. There's no audio in this. It's purely video. So if we need to change any of these, um, well, let's just have a look at some of the other options. We've got digital SLR. If you were working with, say, a Canon um, 550 or a 60D, and you can match those settings there. You've got other uh, types of high definition video, DV, digital video PAL and NTSC, mobile devices, red, red cameras, and so on. But for now, we're going to actually go to settings tab and click on the drop down menu where you can get a list of lots of different types of cameras. But we're going to choose custom from the top, which will allow us to actually input the size that we need and also all of the other options. So we're going to choose 23.976. We're going to type in the size of the frame 960 by 540 square pixels. We don't need to change any of this. There's no audio, but we can just leave it at the default setting. And I think we're ready to go. We'll call this sequence two, click OK, and it's going to create this sequence two for us. And this is sequence two down here. Sequence one is still there. Uh, sequence two opens in a new tab for us. So then we can drag and drop the footage from the library onto our timeline. And just to be aware as well, so first of all, we can see that the footage has matched perfectly the size of our sequence, which is exactly what we wanted. And if we just play through this, it actually um, gives us a perfect preview, exactly what we're looking for. But as I was just about to say, um, you can mix and match any kind of footage, any size of footage. So if, if we have a 960 by 540 sequence, we can still import bigger or smaller files, different frame rates, resolutions. Premiere can handle all of it, and it's going to adapt and uh, modify and, and basically compress it all together into one final video file. But it's just better if you want the highest quality to work with a sequence that matches the settings of your footage. You can also um, nest sequences inside each other. So if, for example, I wanted to put sequence one into sequence two or vice versa, I could do that. But we'll look at that in a later tutorial. All right, so let's open up a new file. Or, well, before we do this, there's a couple of different ways that you can import footage. So we looked at there when I imported the cool board that move, I went to file import and then I just navigated to the exercise files folder on my hard drive, went into the video and clicked on a file and that imported it for me. Another quick way to do that is if you just double click in the space inside your project panel, it's going to take you to the import menu and you can just double click on a file and it will import that for you. And there's a couple of other ways you can do this as well. If you go to the media browser window at the bottom, you can use this to navigate through your hard drive, find files that are actually stored there, and uh, import them just by double clicking here as well. And the third way is just by using Adobe Bridge. So if you wanted to, say, um, import a clip from Bridge, uh, you could just open Bridge in your applications and have a look at your files in there. Adobe Bridge is actually a very useful program for previewing video clips and it's, uh, it beats uh, Quick Look, say, on a Mac or, or any other preview 
um, programs that are sort of built into default operating systems. And it allows you to see all of the settings that belong to your video clip as well. Okay, so now we're just going to finally have a look at how to sort and organize clips in Premiere. And to do that, I'm going to uh, open up this new file here. Click Open. And I just need to find my exercise files one more time. Video. Okay. So if you need to sort your files out, I'm just going to create a new project here and import some video clips. going to import all of these. I'll import some video files, some audio files, and some pictures, just so we have something to work with for this, okay? Maybe, what else have we got here? Some stills. Yeah, we'll just import these as well. Okay, that's perfect. So if we have a look in our project library now, we've got a load of media files that uh, are quite disorganized and would, be, would present a slight problem in terms of organization. Um, to be a good video editor, you've got to be an excellent manager of media because you're going to be working with lots of different files, lots of different types of files, and you need to keep them organized. So if we just select the project panel, and if we press the tilde key just to expand that so we can just focus on all of the files that we're working with here, you can press tilde again just to minimize it. But um, for now, I want to just maximize the project panel so we can see the files. So. From here, we can sort our files according to a, a variety of different options. So, for example, if we wanted to sort by duration, we could put the longest clips at the top and the shortest ones at the bottom. If we wanted to sort by frame rate, so we knew that all of the same frame rate clips would be beside each other, we could do that. As we can see we've got 24 frames all beside each other. Um, the most common way is to sort by name, so we can sort it alphabetically from A to Z. And to organize these, what we do is create new categories for our various types of media. And in Premiere, instead of a new folder, we actually create what's called a new bin. And this is a throwback to sort of old filmmaking terminology, where they would actually use a bin for to store the film reels. Um, but now we're just going to click on new bin and we'll type in video first and then we're going to just have a look at all our video clips here so we've got anything that starts with move or mp4 we can add that so we can add all these let's just keep those ones out add 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 so we've got quite a lot of video files here. And just bring all of these in. And once you select all of these, you can simply drag and drop them into your video clip folder. So I'll just select most of these first of all. Almost there. One more, and let's just drag them into the video folder. And then we can actually close that so we can keep track of everything that we're looking at. Let's create a new bin, and this time we'll call it audio. And we'll put in our audio clips in here. Select them first, drag and drop. OK, 
Okay, and then a new one, new bin for images. Select our three image graphic files. And finally, one more bin for sequences. And drag our sequence in there. So we can see very quickly, we've now organized all of our media files in categories that make sense and just makes it much easier to manage them and use the ones that we need in the right settings.